villains love to wreak havoc on society and their fellow man. But many of them have gone too far and don't know when enough is enough. You're about to witness the battles of a group of megalomaniac supervillains as they check in the court appointed treatment and try to shake their villainous ways in the effort to become law abiding citizens. I'm Dr. Cannibal, and this is Supervillain Rehab. In my opinion, Christmas is a time of year when we inexcusably spend an exorbitant amount of money on the intolerable cunts that we call family. Now these are the same individuals who I wouldn't piss on their teeth if their mouths were on fire, so why the fuck would I want to buy them gifts? Personally, I say bollocks to all that and refuse to play along with society's retail musical chair gluttony. Instead, I prefer to indulge myself by spending my holidays face down in the Tapioca Gentleman's Club All-You-Can-Eat Muff Buffet. Nothing is more festive than downing a liter of vodka after a never-ending smorgasbord of pussy. Now I've heard that every time you make a stripper come, an Eskimo gets AIDS. What does Christmas mean to me? Shoot, it's the time of year when we gather around the burning cross with our kinfolk and play pin the nose on the Israelite to see who gets the honor of stuffing a Christmas pig. And what's your family stuffing of choice? Our penises, of course. Dang, man, what else would you stuff a live pig with? Shoot, just the thought of it's awakening my anger when I treat troll. Steven, it's a go! Shit, what well, does Christmas mean to me? It's just another time of year when motherfucking white folks like to rub it in the face of colored folks the gross economic inequalities they've enjoyed for motherfucking centuries. Shit, these niggas even have the holiday movie market fucking corner. Man, there ain't one good motherfucking black Christmas movie. And if one of you fucking crackers even thinks about mentioning a Madea Christmas, I will butt fuck your asshole with your own little white noodle dick. Well, what about this Christmas with Mackay Pfeiffer and Chris Brown? Man, the only reason I don't give you a motherfucking tracheotomy and throat fuck you to death right now is because Delroy Linda was in that movie. And any movie with Delroy Linda in it, even a gay motherfucking midget porno, is at least worth one motherfucking viewing if for no other reason than to let his noob essence wash all over your motherfucking ass. Bunch of goddamn motherfucking crackers. I love Christmas. It's my favorite time of year. I just love decorating Snake Island in all the festive colors of the season. You see, I spend 11 months a year plotting the demise of my enemies, so it's nice to be able to kick back every December and sit by a roaring fire, enjoying a nice glass of Chardonnay, maybe even nibble on some nuts, or even a nice Yule log. I wish Christmas was every day so that I could wrap myself in tinsel and garland year-round. Fucking elf. That sounded really gay, didn't it? In Latvia, Christmas is the time of year when every man returns to the home of his birth so that his mother may give him his annual sponge bath. Nothing relaxes the body and calms the mind quite like a full body scrub down from the woman who birthed you. Having a mother run a hot soapy sponge all over your body from your head to your toes is heavenly. Mother always said no son of hers penis would ever smell like an elk's cock on baby Jesus' birthday. Not sure why baby Jesus would ever want to smell a man's cock on his birthday, but I suppose it's better to be safe than sorry. You know, I've always been curious though as to how my mother knew what an elk's cock smelled like in the first place. Uh, we don't celebrate this Christmas you speak of on the theory or whatever the fuck that is, bro. But we do celebrate Grimace. You celebrate Grimace, the purple blob from McDonald's? What the fuck are you talking about, bro? I said Grimace, not Grimace, you dumb fuck. Jesus Christ, dude, you've never heard of Grimace? It's a fucking epic month-long celebration of my godly birth. It's basically an all-month orgy of me and 12 of Ethereum's hottest fucking broads as they worship my gargantuan moves like cock on an hourly basis. It's fucking epic, bro. Now, I don't know who this fucking Grimace asshole is you speaking of, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a monster-sized penis the likes of mine, nor does he have 12 fucking primo babes fighting over whose turn it is to ride it. And do you know why that fucking is? Because you're epic. You fucking ain't right, bro, because I'm fucking epic. You can just chalk that up as another motherfucking triumph. Then I lived back in Mother Russia. I'd spend Christmas Day at the Libyanka building in Moscow, torturing the KGB's political dissidents. My favorite method of interrogation is a medieval technique called the pair. And what does that consist of? The pair is a metal instrument shaped like the fruit it's named after that you insert into the anus of your victim. Now depending on your desired effect, you can simply just skin and tear the subject's anal valves or continue to expand the mechanism, stretching the anal cavity well beyond its elasticity. I only use this technique on the Christmas day for my own pleasures, never to extract any information. I believe it is well documented that I enjoy receiving the anal sex, but sometimes I also enjoy being the pitcher. Oh, you cheeky fucking bastard. What does Christmas mean to me? Go fuck yourself. That's what it means to me, you fucking cunt. Or dare you use my disability for your own sick and twisted person again. You think that just because I'm half a man and it's Christmas time, that that gives you the fucking right to insinuate that I'm some kind of fucking elf. Uh, 
What are you talking about? Oh, don't play coy with me, cooksucker. If I wasn't contractually obligated to this show and needed the money, I'd hurl myself off this fucking sheet and fist fuck your uvula. Next fucking question, asshole. Dude, what does Christmas mean to me? I don't know, bro. But I won't stop to dribble up my ass because I sat on a peanut M&M. &M. You see, I like to eat peanut M&Ms when I play Black Ops, bro. And I like to play Black Ops in the nude. So one day while I was playing, one of them must have fallen off my lap and rolled down in between my legs. And I must not have seen it sitting there when I came back from the bathroom, bro, because as soon as I sat back down, it did not pass go or collect its $200. Instead, it just went right up my asshole. And since I'm an animal lover and all, I know how much gerbils like peanuts, bro. So it seemed only natural that a gerbil would aid me in removing other piece of candy from my butthole. Dude, the way I saw it, the gerbil got a nut and I got the obstruction removed from my sphincter, so I'd say it was a win-win for all involved. And that, bro, is what Christmas means to me. My favorite Christmas gift has to be a set of pure ivory trinity anal bees that were cut from an elephant's tusk that my mistress Ling Lee gave to me many, many years ago. Now, needless to say, I don't have them anymore, nor did they stay ivory in color, but that's besides the point. You see, every Tuesday she'd meet me at my office after hours, and while she performed fellatio on me, she'd jam those angelic beads up my arse, and just as I was about to arrive, she'd yank them out really fast, which made a very loud popping noise. Now, I can only assume that's where that term pop came from in reference to having an orgasm, because I used to pop all over her face like a champagne bottle in a rap video. Dang, dang, man, that's a good question. Shoot, I'd have to say my favorite Christmas gift would have to be my first pair of sheep shears. Now, while my father may prefer a sheep with a nice patch of wool on it, I'm what you call a new wave shepherd and that I like my sheep to be sheared down smooth. Man, there ain't nothing like the sight of a smooth, pink sheep quivering in the cold, crisp morning air, if you know what I mean. Dang, just the thought of it brings back the memories of my youth and I get goose pimples all over and it's like tickling my biggle. Damn, no one ever forgets sharing that first sheep. Mm-mm. Dang, dang, man, I'm sorry, what were we talking about again? Your favorite Christmas gift? Phew, <laughs> that's right. Well, then it's definitely them shears. No freaking doubt about it. None at all. Faux show. What's my favorite Christmas gift? I have to say Abraham Lincoln giving black folks their motherfucking freedom. Man, ain't nothing ever stuck it to the white man quite like that. Shit, them ignorant crackers in the motherfucking South still ain't got over that shit yet. Man, the only time you hear white folks in the South cheering on a nigga is if they about to be fucking lynched or scoring a motherfucking touchdown for their favorite college football team. Shit, white folks is a motherfucking piece of motherfucking work. But Abraham Lincoln didn't free the slaves on Christmas. Nigga, please, freeing black folks from the bondage of motherfucking slavery is an eternal gift that's been passed down from motherfucking generation to motherfucking generation. Shit, yeah, freedom is a gift that keeps on motherfucking giving you, dumb motherfucking cracker. So as I was saying, motherfucker, my favorite gift is freedom. That's closely followed by my VHS copy of Coonskin starring Richard Rountree and Vanetta McGee. Oh, that's easy. Without a doubt, it's the bulletproof codpiece Chrome Dome gave me a few years ago. Now, for reasons even I'm not aware of, the members of Scars have a real fetish for shooting people in the dick. Don't ask me why, but that seems to be the way they do business. Who or what is Scars? Silly me. Scars is an elite American anti-terrorist unit that's sworn to bring me down. Don't ask me what the acronym stands for because I haven't the foggiest, but I like to think it means snake cocks are really sexy. Damn it! I think I might be gay. My favorite gift was the Shetland pony my mother got for me when I was a young boy. I would ride around the countryside pretending I was the great warlord Visvaldus raiding Livonian lands. My mother would cheer me on as I attacked scarecrow after scarecrow upon my noble steed. It brought me and still brings me great joy to make my mother proud, or as she calls it, awakening her libido. Never was quite sure what she meant by that, but those joyous days, much like my youth, were fleeting. One day while I was out riding, my steed bucked me from my mount and proceeded to bite off my left nipple like it was plucking a grip from a vine. Nevertheless, I beheaded the foul beast and ordered all Shetland ponies to be beheaded throughout the kingdom, once and for all putting an end to their devious schemes and plots. My mother was so proud of me that she said one day she too would mount me as I had my pony. I admit, she has a colorful way of professing her love for me. I don't know that I have a favorite Grimace gift, bro, because when you're as fucking triumphant as me, all your gifts are fucking awesome. But, that being said, there is one that's my most fucking memorable. You see, back in Etheria, there's this fucking blonde-haired prick named Prince Anthony, and he's my sworn mortal fucking enemy. So this one particular Christmas Eve, I fucking infiltrated this little bitch's castle and came bursting into what I thought was his fucking bedroom, only to fucking realize it was actually his parents instead. You know, when the gods give you lemons, you make a fucking sacrifice in their honor, I always say. So I decapitated Prince Pussy Quiver's father and spiked his severed fucking head at the foot of his bed. And to add insult to fucking injury, I ended up banging Queer Boy's hot fucking ass ma. You raped her? 
Whoa, whoa, what the fuck are you talking about, Chief? I've never had to pay for, beg for, or forcibly take pussy in my fucking life. That fucking broad took one look at the enormous bulge of my fucking elfskin shorts and practically raped me. She couldn't get enough of my elf sized cock. That broad rolled me like a fucking airport rental car, if you know what I mean. Now, the best part was Mama's boy walked in on us just as I doused her in the guise of my fucking godly essence. The look on his face was fucking priceless, too, bro. That was one of my most epic fucking triumphs ever. During the Cold War, I infiltrated MI6 as an administrative asset, but I broke the prime directive that all spies fall off and I accidentally fell in love with my mark. For Christmas that year, he bought me a British mod for a rescue survival knife because he wanted me to be able to protect myself when he wasn't around to do so for me. That proved to be his fatal mistake. Not the buying of the gift itself, but his belief that I needed a man to protect me. So after a night of vigorous intercourse, I used my gift to excavate his heart from his chest cavity. It now sits on my dresser in a jar of formaldehyde. I have to say that's the best Christmas gift I ever got. Christmas is a fucking Ponzi scheme taught up by Mattel, Hallmark, Walmart, Jeffrey the Giraffe, and George fucking Lucas in order to rob people blind of their hard-earned cash every December. This fucking holiday has helped to spawn generations of ungrateful snot-nosed little fucking wankers. Now, I wouldn't give you a warm cup of piss for any of those fucking cunts. They could all go fuck off and die. The best gift would be on Black Friday to firebomb every fucking Walmart and Toys R Us across this greedy fucking country. Now, that's what I'd call a great fucking Christmas. Dude, that's an excellent fucking question, bro. Fuck. I think I'm gonna have to say the Prince Albert piercing my 12th grade English teacher pay for. I mean, at first I was like, no fucking way am I gonna ram a piece of metal through the head of my Me Too, especially because I go commando, bro, and sometimes I have a tendency to catch my beef jerky in the zipper. So I'm just envisioning myself catching this steel rod in the metal teeth and it's splitting the head of my chill like a fucking chicken cutlet. I mean, I know we're all gonna die something, but fuck, dude, I don't want it to be by bleeding out through my dong. But, you know, after a couple of hits of meth off her ass, I said, what the fuck? I mean, you're only gonna live once, right? So I went ahead and got the piercing. Mostly because my teacher said it would help to enhance our sex, especially when I stuck it in her pooper, bro. But, to be honest, it was kind of cumbersome. But she seemed to like it, so I kept it in until I was legally obligated to join the fucking army, dude. You know, surprisingly, it healed up nicely, and now I have this little bump just under the head of my schlong that's kind of like my G-spot for when I slap the Cyclops. Bro, let me tell you, I have the most intense of fucking money shots. I mean, they make my taint fucking tingle. Dude, if covering your stomach and a coating of your own baby batter doesn't inspire visions of a white Christmas, I don't know what fucking will. In God's name, did you see wild animals mating? Shoot, on television, of course. I could feel the blood rushing to my mighty yoga slam. Shoot, it's pretty much a blur from there, but I vaguely remember using a can of fan orange soda to penetrate my asshole with just before I blacked out. Damn, can I say fan on TV, Doc?